Bob Iger's precious Disney Plus is in danger of being beaten by a new streaming service, that being Rupert Murdoch's Tubi. Let's talk about that on That Park Place. To be or not to be? That is the question. To be me is to be Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and to be the guy to my, I'm going to say right, Mr. Vash Guy. How you doing, Vash? I'm doing very, very well. Uh, better with the Shakespeare reference, that's for sure. But <laughs> I'm doing really, really well because we have a special guest in there. That's okay. right. That's right. And to uh, reference Shakespeare in its original Klingon, we, of course, have uh, the great Chancellor Galrog of this channel, uh, Mr. Culture Casino. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, that's, a, that's an upgrade from Hobo Gandalf. So thank you for that. I never called you a hobo. <laughs> Not out loud, at least. Uh, but what, what we want to do is we want to go to this uh, wonderful Twitter account, Mac. Uh, now it's known. Uh, you can see that on the screen. This chart came out, and we talked about this on a live stream, but I think this is uh, good for a video, and also some additional information was added here. Uh, this, this quote here, YouTube successfully combined cable TV streaming and social media. It's the largest pay TV streamer after surpassing eight million subscribers at $73 a month. Uh, this streaming claims largest piece of TV viewing pie. Uh, Culture, you and I have already talked about the fact that uh, cable and broadcast encap encapsulates 50% of the market right now, yep. which uh, there's maybe some case to be made here that uh, that uh, is going to stay around that place. I, I think it's a reasonable prediction. And of yeah. course, depending on how you view YouTube, they may be over 50% right now because this is a virtual MVPD uh, or whatever the acronym is, cable over the internet. Uh, so looking at this, it looks like as far as straight streaming plays, Netflix is number one, and then Hulu is number two, Prime Video three, uh, Disney Plus is four, and then with only 0.2% less than Disney Plus right here is Tubi. Now, uh, Disney Plus, obviously, the entire future of the Walt Disney Company has been tied to Disney Plus. Uh, they are at least 14, maybe maybe $16 billion in the hole in order to uh, make this thing. They have taken all of the profits from the parks division and pushed them towards Disney+. Plus. They did a $70 billion acquisition of Fox in order to get a larger piece of Hulu in order to get content for Disney+, Plus as well, and to fill out the Marvel Cinematic Universe in order to complete the set here. They got the, uh, they got the rights to the first Star Wars film, which they did not have uh, when they bought Lucasfilm because that was distributed by Fox uh, here, which, by the way, that uh, is why we now have those fancy digital collections here. They just had to buy Fox for $70 billion so they could complete their streaming business. And of course, Tubi, for those of you who are not aware, is owned by uh, by the original Fox. Not the Fox that was bought by Disney, but the original Fox. This was uh, Rupert Murdoch's streaming service here that he bought for $440 million. That is not a lot of money. Uh, culture, I, I want to go to to you here. You open this up for I, I want you to comment on this, but which is more, seventy billion dollars or four hundred and forty million dollars? Oh, definitely seventy billion dollars. I, I, I are I you sure? I'm, Do you I'm want to take sure. your time with that figure? No, I, I think that one that you gave me the softest of all balls. Um, I will say that if you look at these it, the, the this performance for this little streaming service that could, that's going to be a theme for me on videos today. But Tubi is crushing it. And again, with very little investment, the catalog could be argued that Disney Plus, the, the, the full fleshing out of Disney Plus and all, and all of the streaming business, business for Disney cost them in excess of $100 billion. I would like that number to be more in people's brains because uh, really they acquired a bunch of linear assets that they know are aging dogs in order to get access to the catalog that was Fox in order to have content to put on their streaming service. And then they promptly flushed that. They also did it so that they could acquire the other portion of Hulu that they couldn't just acquire for cash. So it was kind of a package deal, but I think all of it, that entire purchase was all about streaming. 
I don't oh, yes. know that anybody and can push back on that. I, I think you're correct. And of course, one of the uh, charges leveled by Nelson Peltz against Bob Iger is that the, the pro forma revenue of Fox when it was purchased by the Walt Disney Company, 66% of it was linear, otherwise known as cable and, and broadcast. So yeah. uh, if the Walt Disney Company's future is in streaming, then uh, they they tied them to something that represents exposure. So there's two options here. And Vash, I want to go to you for this. Uh, is linear more important than Bob Iger has indicated in the past, or did Bob Iger make the right call by buying Fox for its streaming assets? <laughs> uh, well, that's <laughs> that's that's quite the question, isn't it? Um, I would say that Bob Iger had a vision for where streaming would be and how much they would have invested in it past a Fox acquisition and grossly underestimated just, just, just how profound those, those costs would end up being partially because, well, he decided to get over, give over the seat uh, at a pivotal point in the company's history to somebody who he didn't necessarily support and actually actively undermine, interestingly enough. And here's the thing, here's why I think culture's, it's so brilliant when it comes to this point right here, because the amount of money that they have spent on this in a post Fox acquisition world is astonishing. Remember they spent $30 billion in 2021 oh and then another $33 billion in 2022 in order to produce content, a large, a, a large portion of it, I would say most of it going towards either the facilitation or production for shows, uh, on Disney Plus. And this is what Caroline Reed, I thought, brought out so brilliantly in Forbes that by the time this content was actually produced, nobody wanted it. And now you have shows like Willow that are $100 million plus in terms of their investment of uh, being shelved entirely, not even on the platform in order to, in order to take the tax write off on it. But there's still a, a fee associated with them. So this is uh, or an impairment fee, I believe. Uh, this is uh, it, it could cough. Uh, and, and also, too, you have to, you have to think, too, you brought, you brought up the question about linear, uh, Jonas. Uh, remember, this this cannibalized linear as well. So oh, yes. if linear was part of the strategy going forward, they undermine it uh, extensively by investing so heavily into Disney Plus and putting the emphasis now, on that as much now, as I Now, I think, I think culture is going to have some responses to what you're saying. But culture, on the tail end of it, I want you to point out the difference between Disney Plus's content model and Tubi's, if you don't mind. Uh, Disney Plus relies on making their own content and Tubi relies on getting other people's content at a rental. Yes. <laughs> and, and how much does it cost for Disney to make their content versus Tubi? Uh, well, uh, Tubi is spending nothing on making their content. They're just renting it. And Disney is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on series that they eventually had to disappear like Willow. Uh, can I say this for the equivalent cost of one Willow and one, um, Miss Marvel and adding in maybe a, let's say, uh, WandaVision, mm -hmm. you could have bought Tubi. Yeah, for, for the cost of Andor and Ahsoka, they bought Tubi oh, over there. Oh, even better. Even better, yeah. 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 Oh, um, my goodness gracious. Less than the, le you, could buy, you could buy one Tubi for the same cost as Rise of Skywalker or the same cost as Force Awakens and still have money left over for the same cost as Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny without the tax credits. Uh, yes, you could <laughs> buy, bought Tubi. Now, n n just I need to say this before we get into Please. what the amazing thing that should scare the pants off of Disney Plus and is scaring the pants off of Disney Plus uh, here. Uh, Tubi is ad supported. So they just, they're a repository of others people, other people's content. By the way, Deadpool was over on Tubi for a little while. That, uh, you know, great piece of content that Disney claims as one of their flagship brands for this year. That's been on Tubi for free. It's not currently on Tubi. It's also on Max. Uh, not that I'm the hugest Deadpool fan here. I'm just pointing out that uh, the, the the brand degradation is, is pretty strong here. If Disney is trying to say that, no, all of our Disney stuff is on Disney Plus. Uh, for Tubi to have that, that's a big deal. By the way, those free with ads, that seems to be what has made Hulu work. Even though Hulu hasn't been free with ads, it's been ad supported for a much longer period of time. So Hulu was doing pretty well. The the thing that I haven't pointed out here, um, we're, we're just gonna go over here and, uh, and, and point this out. 
All right, so what has not been revealed here is the bottom part of this. So Tubi right now is 1.7% of the market, according to the most recent data. 1.9% is Disney+. Plus. Hulu is right here at 28 If we go to September of last year, Hulu was 3.6%. So Hulu, this is just uh, streaming video on demand, Hulu. I, I don't think this includes Hulu uh, with live TV. Uh, down here, Tubi is 1.3%. So it would look like the, the growth in Tubi is actually coming out of Hulu. Now, if we look at February of last year, Tubi only represented 1% of the entire streaming landscape here. So the free stuff is moving up and up and up as Disney Plus uh, moves down and Hulu moves down. I think that Disney understands here that free with ads is the way to go. It would appear so because they want to get back to that kind of revenue, that that more, I, I, I should say, predictable revenue model, if that's uh, the correct nomenclature there, uh, culture. Was that no, your assessment? Yo, a hundred percent because they, they charge their advertisers, uh, $20 per like 10,000, uh, views or whatnot, or something similar to that. I, I had it a moment ago, but it's, it's their, their structure. Yeah, no, it's actually $20 per thousand views on Tubi is what the basic estimate for brands, you know, to spend mm -hmm. on their advertising, uh, their campaigns. So there's it, back in 2019 uh, when they were smaller with just you know about 20,000 titles that were available on their service, uh, they were spending about a hundred million dollars a year to get that content. Now they're up over 50,000 programs. Imagine that in their mm -hmm. catalog. And so you know you can do the math. I mean, there's probably spending you know about mm, 300 million dollars a year. I think yeah. they're coming out pretty good. Now, now, the thing uh, that also bears repeating here is, according to a report from Bloomberg, uh, and I think Circana is the original source of this information, oh, Bluey yeah. represents 30% of all television viewing on Disney+, Plus, which is a majority of, a majority of streaming is centered around television, because with movies, it's two and a half hours, and then it's done. Whereas television, there's a lot more of it, so it represents a much more significant portion. Now, right. if Disney Plus were to lose 3% of this figure here, it wouldn't just be under Tubi. It, it would be under Peacock, maybe even under Max, if they did not have Bluey on Disney Plus. Now, there's an argument to be made that people are tuning into Disney Plus and they like Disney Plus, and so people are people's kids are just watching whatever, whatever is in front of them on the Disney streaming service. But they're, that show in particular has such a... Uh, devoted fan base that I, I think they would follow them wherever they go. Um, and also pointing out here that according to this article from The Verge that we have covered in the past, Disney reportedly wants to bring always on channels to Disney Plus. And we have a source that has reached out here, a new source. It's a walk-in, but we can verify some aspects of it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pass on the stuff that we've been able to verify with our other sources. ABC, the ABC app as it were, has been running free with ads channels on it for years now. And Disney has seen how much revenue they have made from just putting, there's some National Geographic stuff in there. And by the way, we're talking like there's a Caesar Milan channel, otherwise known as the Dog Whisperer, or there'll be a show that has its own channel. These small micro IP or micro genre channels here that are free with ads and so I think Disney Plus is seeing this small little niche of ABC, and that is why they're going with, with these always-on channels on Disney Plus. I think this is the way that they are fully intending on going. They're planning on replicating cable here because they are seeing that Tubi is eating their lunch. Bob Iger got into this mentality, right? He's like, okay, why, why do a distribution deal for the carton of milk when you can own the cow and control the the content output by the gallon right this i think was the mindset for pixar the mindset for lucasfilm the mindset for marvel all these different properties but when it came to streaming it's like oh we definitely got to have the cow that's for sure the problem is is you got to put up the farm for that cow and that's where they got into real trouble because that that comes with tremendous costs and overhead rather than have that same cow live some on somebody else's farm now that they have their own farm it's like well 
we have advertising on this farm and we have to allow as many people in as possible in order to see these advertisements uh, around these cows right here. So it, it's it's <laughs> a really kind of fascinating uh, thing how they've tried to pivot out of this. But yeah, they're essentially going back to cable, which is hilarious because they already had it. They had a linear broadcasting enter enterprise that was unbelievably successful and printed money. And now in their pivot to streaming, uh, they have really cannibalized those businesses and taken revenues out of those in order to uh, uh, in order to, to, to prop up uh, this new enterprise. If, if I can, if I can also point out, they also have the infrastructure already for a YouTube TV equivalent with Hulu with live sports, but they've refused to grow it because uh, that was partially owned by Comcast for a large period of time. Now, they could just flip the switch and, and grow it there. But instead, instead of taking Hulu, which is a nice brand neutral brand that could mean anything like the cable company which uh, is larger than disney plus right it is larger than disney plus and makes them more money than disney plus uh they could have said disney plus by the way disney is going to be this premium option within here they could have had that prestige here and they could have said this is how much we're going to charge for you to get in access to our hbo level disney content here but they they didn't do that instead they said you know what instead of making kulu our brand for general entertainment we're going to turn disney into the strongest children's entertainment brand in the world possibly the strongest brand in the world and turn it into a generic like netflix or xfinity these meaningless, intentionally meaningless terms. They're going to make Disney into the guy that owns your cable. And this it's, is the great dream of Bob Iger and his vision for the future. It, it's the weirdest thing. It's, it's almost like it took them a long time, decades, to develop the linear broadcast television model that everything kind of spawned from. And that capitalist, in, all that capital, that capitalist venture that they went into was the only way that it would work with ads and everything else if they were going to try to distribute this way. And it took them how long banging their heads against a wall to realize none of them could be Netflix except Netflix. And it looks like none of them are going to be, well, to be right away, I imagine eventually. But wow. Yeah, it's a pretty good point of just putting content out and running ads on it seems to be a more successful model than whatever it is Disney thinks they're doing here. Uh, Vash, do you have any comments before we uh, finish up? <laughs> yes, the $100 billion experiment didn't actually end up working out. And now they're having to pivot away uh, from those things. It, it really is unfortunate, Jonas, to, to, to see just how much capital has been allocated towards this venture that has yet, like, uh, it has yet to be profitable. It's crazy. Again, if they were stuck with the revenue model of let's license our content to other people like a Tubi or like a Netflix or whatever, that way we can just get royalty checks back. We don't have to actually operate the farm. We'll, we'll be, we'll be in a solid position. And then we can take though the, the um, unbelievable amount of content spend that we, you know, obviously allocated over all these years and put it towards things that actually make us money like the parks, for example. See, the see what's interesting is that they, they've, they've degenerated the, fl the flywheel to a certain extent because the parks haven't received that level of investment. Instead, they've been, they've been, they've taken all of that gross revenue and have, and have thrust it towards all of these other uh, places that ha hasn't. Right. Have right. And before. all of this Disney plus content not landing is the greater disaster for the Walt Disney company because they have yeah. not been feeding the flywheel that feeds the parks. They've been draining the parks and it has not reciprocated back to the parks in the way that it used to when they were making Moana's and Coco's and things like that. But maybe they uh, killed the golden goose. Uh, or the golden cow in this particular instance here. They still have to make $11 billion. They have to make back $11 billion in accumulated operating costs that they have yet to, <laughs> that they, they have yet to uh, make up for here with Disney Plus. And they won't do that, by the way. They're going to combine Hulu and Disney Plus and maybe this ESPN thing together before anyone gets a clear answer on whether or not Disney Plus was profitable. We need to wrap this up, Culture. What do you have to say? Uh, Disney is not a technology company like they would like to be. They're a consumer goods company. They're a product, and their product is entertainment in multiple forms, whether it's physical, digital, whatnot. And they and others like them. And I'm going to say this because a lot of people would suggest that we're not being critical of other streaming services that are equally inept. 
Uh, but hey, everybody spent far too much money trying to be a tech company and not focusing on the thing that they do well. And that's yeah. where we are. It's a fair it's point. It's just that Disney never admitted that they made a mistake here, whereas other streamers have. True. Aaron LaBerge, actually, the chief technology officer, just actually stepped down this morning. Interesting. Yep, that's, uh, maybe that's a realignment there. Go there's ahead. probably going to be some more coverage of that coming soon on that Park Place. Of course, we want to throw this to our commenters. You've probably been commenting this entire time, but we want to ask you, what do you think of this entire situation? Do you watch Tubi? I'm hearing it's actually pretty popular, especially compared to Disney+. Plus. Uh, like this video. If you like this video, go check out Culture Casino at his channel. He is he, he is one of my favorite guys to go to for business analysis here. And uh, of course, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media account.